came out there. I mean, it wasn't nothing that was put in my mind. I was just laid back and concentrated. And you know, well, you know how it is probably to be hypnotized. And it I did kind of the Navy sent me in a uh, doctor in Hawaii to see if I was abducted by aliens, and I was found out. But yeah, I know what it's like. She didn't put no words in. I I remember having to come out of it, but uh, and I I've had a whole bunch of stuff happen to me. I want to talk to you about that too. But you finish this Sarah's story, and we'll get back to. Me. I'll add mine, but Jay Allen Heineck, I met him too. So he was Joseph Allen, but and you call him John, but I don't know if he went yeah. by that or not. But it says uh, uh, I met him. But let's finish your story, and, and I'll, then we'll talk some of mine too. With you. Okay. So I want because I didn't know about this second one, uh, but I did know about the Pascagoula first one. But tell me right. this one. Well, it was in '93, and, and uh, apparently they had put uh, something in my nasal cavities to a tracker mm-hmm. or something, and they come back to get it out, and then that's when I decided I had enough. Well, I actually died on board that all. Uh, Crap while it was there. And uh, they actually brought me back, I think. But Can you tell me long... what it looked like? Because I've been on craft too. But you tell me what yours looked like. Because I don't think, I think there's all kind of people out there after the on and them separating Inky and Enlil and the old Sumer stories come on down with the Um and Elish and the, come on down to right. the Bible stories, you know. But I've been looking all the way back to. Um, people that was here, you know, all them stories. So, but you tell me, can you remember anything? What the size, sort of like you do the blue lights and uh, the size or anything? And, and I want to ask how many fingers they had, too. But you tell uh, me what you remember. Yeah, the uh, the craft was probably a little over 100 foot long, probably Good 10, man. 12 foot tall. And when it came over to the island, it was broad daylight, but it was cloud cover around it, so you couldn't see uh, nothing but the bottom of it. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay, keep going. Uh (laughs) So this cloud cover was there, and it just kind of opened up and pulled me up in it. And this is when she tried to uh, take his thing out of my nose and I was upset by then, and we got in a physical a physical fight with her. And I slammed her head against the wall, and she started bleeding black blood because my mm-hmm. intentions was to kill her and bring her out with me, and me and her both die, oh. just to be honest with you. What kind then, was she? Was she humanoid? She looked like more human. To, yeah, she looked more human than she did anything else. Yeah, you know, I, I did too. I've, I've looked at pictures since 2018 when the book come out of other okay. things. And I've never seen these great big, these grays with the big eyes or these grasshoppers yeah. or things like Me that. Me neither. Oh, the big has, ones? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Mine has always looked it. human. Well, I mean, mine, she did looked, too. mine did too. Now, the story is on the uh, off the island or off this planet. They were little grays, and I've seen them when I was over in Sedona, because they wanted me to come speak at Roswell, and I was like you. I didn't want to be known. I was trying to sneak and talk to Glenn Dennis because the T sent me to talk to him. But now that I'm gonna tell my story for real, I don't know if people are gonna believe me or not because there's too many coincidences. Of other people's stories out there, but I, I, they can put me on lie detector test. So I want to talk to you about all this stuff. That's why I was wanting to know. But you said humans too, so that's good because most people won't admit that that some yeah. of them are. Well, I, like I kind of explained to uh, somebody one time, if I was in a bar drinking a little bit, I wouldn't have to drink much to pick her up. You know, take her out to lunch or something. <laughs> that's, you know, that's just how human looking she looked. Wow. Well, tell me all you know, and then I'll share you. I'll share you some of mine because I want to talk to you about Gulf Breeze and the clouds and stuff happening to me too. But I wanted to do a since I've never swear, never swear, and people I didn't even call him for the show. It's the first time I've ever heard Calvin. 
I I didn't listen to nobody else's show, and I ain't read his book, just so we could have this conversation, hermana, hermana, or what do they say, brother and sister, it's because of kindred spirits, and there's a reason for that, and Calvin, I, so I had no idea you had uh, girls either, I mean, a, a woman and a female, because mine were male, except for the lady that I met here on the planet, and some men too. But what else about yours? And I'll get into mine. So she that was about 100 miles big. It came down out of a cloud, and they pulled you up in it, right? Right. Whoa, then, that's uh, what happened to me. Keep going. When we got real physical, I don't remember how I got back to my boat or nothing. You know, they just, I guess, put me back in it. But all this come out in that hypnosis session with Bud Hopkins. And... Um, this new book has got a lot of information that's coming out, too. It's not so much on the abduction and all, but it's everything that's happened since then. Good. Yeah. That's the stuff I'm going to be interested in right there. Because, you know, they say you don't write the story till you got the whole story. But I still don't have my whole story. And I, I, I wrote a whole bunch of books, but it was like little things. I wrote articles and hitting around me and my husband's stuff. But I never did it like an autobiography or just sit down and write okay I know this is weird you know but I'm starting but I've got a lot of books out there but it wasn't to sell books I think I may have made 20 bucks all in all in 20 or 15 years because I wasn't trying if somebody just happened on it and they were well, you know out there but go ahead well yours. somebody yeah. asked me you know after the books come out they said where are you in it for the money let me tell yeah. everybody something it's no money in books I mean mm -mm. not no more I put more yep. I put uh -huh. more out of my pocket. And I knew people was going to say that. My living was made before then. So I make sure that mine goes back to the community or to a charity. Uh -huh. and, uh, well, you're going to put a landmark. Maybe y'all can save up for the city to put something there or something there's along already, the river. There's already a historical marker there now. That the what? city paid for itself to put up, and uh, oh wow. yeah, Man. they 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 just about three months they put this historical marker up. That'll be there forever, and it tells about what happened. It's a regular wow. historical marker, and it's by the boat new boat landing at uh, 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 Lighthouse Park on off Highway ninety. So if you ever get there, just go to Lighthouse Park. You'll see the little light, lighthouse, and you'll see it sitting over there. And they had the huh. mayor of the city come out and dedicate it and all. Wow. This was this year? Oh, yes, ma'am. Wow. Absolutely. Pastor Amazing. Gula has been really good. There's people that's come for an interview that was closed-minded about any kind of uh maybe aliens or anything like that. And before they left, this one lady came in, and uh, she was a reporter. And like I say, she didn't, you know, I don't think she believed one way or another. But by the time she left, she told me there's no doubt in my mind what's happened to you. The evidence is there. And uh, I can just look at you and tell you're a very sincere person. Wow. That's amazing. Well, I'm glad you got people that are finally open hearted and open minded enough to believe what you're doing because it's not hard to uh believe you to me, but you're speaking from your heart and you're open and people don't realize you don't lie about this stuff. It's not something to be proud of. You don't you're trying to figure out your life story. And right. You know, it, it just it goes against everything you – well, nobody ever told you they were or weren't. All I ever learned was in church or the Bible or school. Did you get a sixth-grade education, or did you have to drop out because y'all didn't have any money? Or what happened to your education, if you don't mind me asking? Well, no, I just didn't like school, and I had to work. See, we were – uh, my family was sharecroppers, and the way we made our living – to start with, up until the oil field, was uh, we'd farm 
farms for other people than split the profits on the farms. So and I spent a minute. Was, that? was, was that 60? Was 60 uh, well, I started about 12 years old plowing a mule. Is that Mississippi? Yes, ma'am. Mississippi up in the Delta of Mississippi. Now, my and family was from Ripley, Mississippi. My Grandpa ran a railroad through Ripley, Mississippi. I, I have a good, I have a real good friend that owns a construction company in Ripley, Mississippi. Huh. Uh, Colum well, Construction. Ask railroad in with Alton because my granddaddy and and son, uh, I met his grandson uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Him and I were real good friends. Back then, I was real young and pretty, and he I was a model part-time and working in Arthur Murray Dent's deal for a little thing while I was going to college and had four kids. But he took my pictures, and it was really weird because he noticed my name, my maiden name on something he had to get legally. He said, you're a Thurman? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm a Faulkner. I said, so what's that mean? He said, you don't know who I am. I said, no. He said, my name's Charlie, Charlie Faulkner. I said, so? <laughs> well, you know, that that little community that I was telling you about where my friend was, I believe that yep. was Faulkner. Really? Uh, yeah, Faulkner, uh, Mississippi, right there by Ripley. Wow. Yeah, that's where his office is in Faulkner. Right well, on. I've never, I've been through there, but I was a truck driver, but he told me the story and that his grandpa and my grandpa, I was like, are you sure it's mine? Because we were from Ripley. He says, yeah. He said, this is fate. He believed in all that stuff. He said, uh-huh. this ain't no coincidence about us meeting. And I thought, because we, we never, you know, I was married with kids and he wasn't, but he was a very nice looking guy. And, and I was pretty, but he was a, a photographer, meant to take my pictures. And I don't know why we were supposed to meet, but maybe there's something to that. Because he was the one that made me start wondering. I never told him about my ET UFO abduction type stuff, you, didn't, you know, but I've always wondered about that story. And now here you are. I always wondered about your story. How do you – this is so amazing to me, Calvin. You've got two stories. Now, i got more than two stories, but I don't know how to put them together. So that's why I admired you, and I've always known I was going to talk to you someday. My baby was in my stomach. Now, she's gone. She's the one that died, but she got taken. And then when we was here in Gulf Breeze, we both got taken off of the – over here and up in the cloud like you said you know what i'm saying it it looked like oh, a yeah. big cloud and took me up and uh and i didn't see her she disappeared down the gulf on the on the sand and uh, this big white cloud came up and it's on youtube i put that uh they took me but they clicked off the uh phone or something because i didn't do it and when I came back, my shoes in the, were still in the sand in the in the uh, phone because I was uh, filming, trying to find her, and I started filming the cloud that came over, like you know, big cloud. It looked like it had a. I was like, what is that? And then next to it came a big round thing, and it looked like it had a, a Mercedes Benz thing in it or something. <laughs> I can't explain. Darn. But uh, I got taken up, and uh, I just don't know how to talk, how to. I don't know how to tell it all. Like, so you just went to a room and said, "I mean, I've written books and stuff, but I wasn't taking it for like I'm gonna put everything down and own it. I can't explain it. Have you ever? But you weren't a writer. See, my mama was a writer, and and so, uh, and my husband loved to tell stories. So, but he told his military stories. So I sort of came by it trying to help my mom and my husband, but I didn't, I was writing for UFO Digest in 2007, and I think that's how I learned about Philip Mantle. I don't know. It must have been when I was writing this T.J. Thurman Morris for UFO Digest. Philip Mantle has been a part of my life, too, and then so when he wanted to write your book, I was so shocked. I I, I was like, I can't believe this. I, I just can't believe it. So now you're going to have two books, 
we got the light. And do you know I met Jay Allen Hynek in an airplane? <laughs> 